Yes. So this mundane astrology is same like whatever we have learned till now. Okay, we all are doing Jyotish. So we have learned many concepts, many techniques. And how we use our birth chart, okay, D1 chart. So are we going to use the same principles in mundane? Or is there something else? Okay, tools and techniques are same or different. All these things you will understand today. Okay, so before I start my topic, uh, quickly I will take five minutes and you can unmute if anybody is practicing this mundane astrology. Okay, they can share their experience. Okay, how they are doing. Anybody who practicing this mundane thing in this session? Nobody? Um. So I don't really look at charts, but I just look at the transits and try to predict very general stuff. Okay. So you are using the transit yes. uh, to find. So we'll discuss this this part also. Okay. So today now I will explain like what are the basic parameters and which kind of charts we should look. Correct. So all these things we will discuss and uh, there you will understand that transit is very basic principle that we can apply in Monday also. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. So it means uh, we all are learning this particular subject very first time. Hmm. So I hope uh, everybody un understand that when we talk about Jyotish, so we call it Vedic Jyotish. Okay. Why Vedic Jyotish? You have, I am taking you a little bit uh, from the beginning. So, in our Vedas, we have 40 literature. Okay, 40 kinds of literature. Now, within this 40 literature, there is a one segment, okay, or one portion of literature, we call it Vedanga. Okay. Like, everybody heard about Vedway, Samway, Rijur, Veda, Atharvay, these four, okay, major. But these are not only four, other than this, we have 26 other literatures also. Okay, in which Vedanga is the one part. Okay, then this particular Vedanga we have divided into six parts. Correct? Anybody know about these six divisions of Vedanga? Anybody heard about Vedanga, Upang, Upanishad, and all these things or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, your voice is breaking, but. Yes, yeah. sir. Kalp, Chand, Vyakran, Jyotish. Uh, okay, so I will, I will, I will explain it. Okay, so and make it easy. So these six limbs of Vedas, which we call it Vedanga. So in Vedanga, we have first Jyotish, okay, which is known as astrology. It, it contains astrology plus astronomy, everything. Clear? Then we have Shiksha. Okay, Shiksha is a kind of a branch which actually deals with the phonetics. Okay, this is a complete branch in itself. Okay, like pronunciation of San Sanskrit alphabets, all these things are given in the Shiksha part. Then we have Chanda. Okay, Chanda actually deals with the poetic matters. Matters. Okay, so we have different kinds of Chanda. The people who read these Vedas and mantras, they know about this Chanda a little bit. Then we have Vyakaran. Vyakaran means simply we can call it grammar. Okay, in that, like in English we have grammar. In similar, in uh, this Vedanga, we have a limb, we call it Vyakaran. Then Nirutta. Okay, Nirutta. In Nirutta we study the explanation of words. Okay, this is a Nirutta. Then we have Kalpa. Okay, Kalpa actually deals 
with the ritualistic part. Okay. So together we call it Vedanga. And Jyotish, we also call it as a Vedanga Jyotish because it's a part of a Vedanga. It's a part of a Veda. Okay, now Jyotish also, if you read any classical book, okay, so a very beginning, you must have heard like three skanda Jyotish. Okay, three skanda Jyotish. There are three skanda, or we can also call it three major divisions in the Jyotish. Okay. First is Siddhanta. Okay. What is Siddhanta? Siddhanta actually deals with the astronomy. Okay. The major part of the astronomy and the planetary to compute the planetary positions and everything are given in the Siddhanta. Siddhanta itself is a very big uh, subject to learn. Okay. But we are not dealing with the Siddhanta at this stage. So the first portion is Siddhanta. And second is, second skanda is Samhita. Okay, and the third skanda is Pura. You know, the portion which you all are studying in Vedic Jyotish, that belongs to Hura. Hura. Okay, that's why we call it Hura Shastra. You are reading the books, Brihat Parasha Hura Shastra. Hmm? Brihat Jata. So Jata also comes under the Hora part. You all are studying Prashna. Okay, Prashna Jyotish. That also comes under the Hora part. Anything else in the Hora? Okay, so these are the major three skandha. Okay. These are further, if you uh, like in Prashna Marga, Shloka number 7, I think, chapter 1. Okay, if you see the classification, we have divided it further. Okay, how? Like I told you, Hora. In Hora, we, we are dealing with the two portions. First is Jatak and Prashna. See, I am not, I'm not showing you any presentation here. Okay, I am uh, not also writing anything. So, don't worry. So, whatever I am saying, I am just explaining it. Just listen to it. Clear? So, in Hora, we deal with the Jatak and Prashna. Okay, Jata, Jataka means what? Simply, we are studying about the person, individual, horoscope, correct? All these things come under the Jataka. Prashna, I hope everybody understands what is Prashna, that is Horari astronomy. So, it means, in nutshell, we all are studying the Hora part. Clear? Then, Samhita. In Samhita Granth, in Samhita section, he will deal with the Nimittas. He will study the Nimittas and Muhurata. Hmm? So this Muhurata branch, Nimittas, all comes under the Samhita. Clear? And the subject which we are studying right now, this mundane astrology, that also comes under the Samhita. The major and the maximum portion or the concepts which you will study in mundane astrology, that, that, that all comes under the Samhita. What does it mean? It means now if anybody wants to learn this mundane Jyotish, let's say if you, if you don't want to join course or if you don't want to attend any lecture, anything, you want to study self, okay, then you can simply read Samhita Grant. Clear? Like for example, you must have heard the name Brihat Samhita. Okay, Brihat Jatak and Brihat Samhita. There are two books, two classical books written by Acharya Varamir. Everybody know about this. Okay. So Brihat Jatak actually deals with the individual horoscopy or we can also call it Jataka part. Hmm? One of the best and beautiful books. We all should read. And then another another classical book by the same author, Acharya Varamir, that is known as the Brihat Samhita. Okay. It contains many topics, many useful topics that many of us ignore. Okay. Even 
like for example gemstones okay many many people say na like uh, no classical literature deals with the gemstone there is no book which talks about the gemstone i am talking about classical book not the modern author book so brihas samhita is a one of the book which deals with the gemstones obviously we will not find like how to wear and how to uh, suggest gemstone all these things are not given clearly okay but in different different chapters you will find some hints okay but you will see the complete chapter dedicated on this particular portion ratna hmm weather forecasting predictions about the rain okay political predictions earthquake you will find each and everything in this samhita brihat samhita okay so i hope everybody understood that this this particular branch of samhita you will find this whole knowledge of mundane thing you will find in the samhita grant okay other than this brihat samhita anybody know about the any other classical book in indra samhita grant i am talking about only classical book not on the modern author anybody knows bphs bphs is not a samhita na huh? okay you are asking of samhita oh, okay yeah samhita ड okay if you come to north india they call drigu samhita okay they both are almost same okay they in 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 those drigu literature you will find the different uh, horoscopes okay and their predictions are given hmm but but no rules like how to make predictions clear but the definition of samhita which we are talking that is different so when we say three skanda jyotish definition as per definition three skanda means there are three skandas three major branch okay first is siddhanta samhita and hora so this samhita as per definition if you understand it then bhu samhita this bhu samhita not comes under this samhita clear now the samhita which uh you can read to understand this whole subject first is brihat samhita that is easily available hmm? and narada samhita is another samhita which you can read i am not saying you will find each and every topic of mundane in uh, narada samhita but maximum portion you will find vashishta samhita Hmm. This is also available. I am. I don't know whether it is available in English or not. But yes, we have this. Then Bhadra Bahu Samika. Okay. So if you want to master this mundane Jyotish or Madhuri Jyotish, you should read Brihat Samika and Bhadra Bahu Samika. These two are the original and good books from which you can learn mundane Jyotish. clear the badrava who samita also uh, you will find on amazon book stores also okay and uh, there are many commentaries also done so you can read that clear so these are the things so these are the classifications actually so any doubt till now you know the 18 pravartak there are 18 major uh, what we call originator of jyotish okay from from which we are actually receiving this knowledge of jyotish there are major 18 people who are they anybody know the name name it's fine or it's very good if they know the sequence also anybody no good 
see this is this is this is how we read jyotish correct so this is a very bad thing so very first chapter when you start jyotish so we should know na like from where we are getting this knowledge it's not only parashar like you are reading bhagavad parashar or shastra and you don't know about the other things it's not good so at least from now onward whenever you start studying jyotish let let's say you are doing now okay so before you start jyotish at least you should take the names of these 18 rishi there are 18 rishis the one 8 18 Eighteen major rishis. At least take the name, pronounce the names of these rishis. They will receive the blessings. Okay, it will make your journey easy. Okay, if you don't know the name, you can write it down. Okay, so the slok sloka says Surya Pitamaho Vyaso Vasisto Atri Parashara. So this first sloka. Is giving you the name Surya first, then Pitamaha. Third is Vyasa. Then Vasisto Atri Parashara. Vyasa Vasisht Atri in Parashar. Hmm. Then second shloka. This is the second part of the first shloka. Kashyapo Narado Gargo Marichir Manu Angiraha. It means Kashyapa Narada Garga Marichi Manu Angirasa. Second shloka says the rest of names. It goes like Loma Shaha Polishya Polishya Shaiva Chavano Yavano Bhrugu. It means Loma Shaha Polishya Chavana Yavana Bhrugu. Okay, and the last name is. Shaunaka. Okay, so all together we call it eighteen atara pravarta. Hmm. So this is a sequence. So you can write it down on some paper, and every day at least pronounce these names. Okay, so whatever you are studying in Jyotish, okay, these all eighteen rishis or pravarta have their original contribution in it. Hmm. So it's better to seek blessings of these pravarta, correct? So whatever uh, topics or techniques we learn in this course, these are also coming from these rishi only. One more thing, every rishi, okay, like see what I'm here. Uh, is not actually rishi. Okay, he is a acharya. Okay, there is a difference between rishi acharya and deva. Okay, so we receive this jyotish knowledge from God directly from the God and from rishi and from acharya. We have three sources. Because nowadays we receive this knowledge from the modern day authors or teachers. Okay, so whenever you read any books. Because you should have an idea, like which book you are reading, who is the author? Okay, is he God himself or Acharya or Rishi? Okay, because the depth of that knowledge you will understand accordingly. So nowadays, whatever you are reading, those all are digested material. Agreed. Okay, so you are learning different different technique. Those are like nowadays we we using many things which is wrong. Okay, or which we are using it wrongly. Okay, but that is not actually taught by the rishi or any of acharya. Okay, but we have developed it. Okay, so you should be careful when you study all these things. Hmm. So that's why whatever we are teaching. In our courses, that is a, a, a different thing. But you should also read these classical books and the knowledge from the Rishi. All these things you should have an idea. Clear? Now, 
these are the some backgrounds of this uh, thing so now understand one thing the basic parameters or the basic tools that we used that, that we are going to use in this mundane or madhini jyotish those are same hmm? three primary things we use in jyotish that is rashi houses and planets correct zodiac signs grah planets and houses grah uh, this bhava same things we will use here also no difference okay but you have to use it in some different manner like for example houses let's start with the houses first so today i'm just giving you the overview okay i'm not going into very detailed about the houses and all so we will discuss that thing in the next session but let's start with the houses first so you know for example second house okay dvitiya bhava so in chakra shastra or the branch of jyotish which, which you are already studying that is a jataka branch but a jataka or a prashna so there you take second house as the house of what house of wealth hmm? house of speech or house of food nourishment okay these are these are what these are the character for the second house agreed the same thing we are going to use in mundane also okay we also have some chart here okay we also have d1 d10 other divisional charts similarly what we are already using now the difference is in this chart the second house like in in the horoscope we call second house as a wealth huh? so on monday we take second house as a wealth of nation hmm? it depends like for what purpose you are using using this chart if you want to predict for the like, let's say for any city okay so that second house becomes the wealth or the finances of that particular city or state or country clear similarly now can anybody tell me what is the third house the third house we take for what third house is what in uh, jatak in jatak jyotish in uh, in user horoscope you take third house for which purpose parakram parakram okay so in mundane how will you interpret it same character but can we use in mundane purpose also so defense policies of a country Ar army army okay why why army um because mars is the karaka of third Sir. house and it has to do with parakram yes. which is courage and i think it also has to do with uh, fighting and war so in that okay. sense defense related stuffs okay so okay we'll we'll discuss about this in more detail about the army and all these things but fine okay third house also your neighbor neighboring countries what does it mean it means third house you can also use for the neighboring countries okay for india third house is what pakistan and bangladesh pakistan bangladesh china yeah. yes sri lanka all the pakistan sri lanka bangladesh nepal ha huh? Yeah. All these are third house for us. Okay, for Pakistan horoscope, third house is. We are third. Correct. So now it depends upon for which country you are using. So accordingly, you have to uh, convert these karaka cards. Clear. In same manner, planets also works in the similar manner. Okay, so when you study the individual horoscope or the jatak, okay, so you you have a different character towards for the graha. Hmm? Like for example, sun, Surya. Surya is what? Surya is a pita or the father. So now, if I want to use planet sun in Monday in English, so how will you interpret it now? Prime minister, maybe president. 
president, prime minister, okay, the people who have the highest post, huh? highest or, rank in the country. Or we can look at the sun as the government overall. Government's higher post is post. Yeah. So sun, we generally know like sun is a government. Okay. So obviously the all government activities or anything related to government in the country that also belongs to this movie. Easy. Okay, but this is not easy. Okay, so in class it looks easy. Okay, but when you when you apply these things practically in the chart, now these are the big toughest part. I will tell you how. Like, for example, if I'm telling, okay, all these 12 houses and nine planets have their own character to us. Hmm? See, now the biggest challenge for you all is you will not find these char all character to us in single book. Okay, no classical books contains the every class, every character to us or every significations of these houses and planets in single book. Now what to do? So from now onward, if you are really interested in learning this subject, so you have to collect some books. There is no any other options. There is no any shortcut. There is no any snapshot techniques and all those things. Okay, because this is the kind of a branch in which uh, you can't bluff actually. Uh, what we say. Uh, like in uh, Jatak, no, you can predict, okay, your marriage is going to happen after four years. Okay, so after four years, what is going to happen? Nobody is going to check. Okay, so you can do your analysis as per your need and you can give any kind of prediction. That's fine. But in Mundane, there are some predictions, okay, which you can verify. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? Okay, you let's say if you practice this subject, okay, you can even predict the headlines for tomorrow. Okay, what will be the headlines or the newspaper headlines? Okay, for the tomorrow, for your country, for your city. Now, if you want to achieve that that thing, that is a real thing. Right? That is a real jyotish. If you can do this, so obviously, what you need. You need good hold on the basics. Okay. And these karatattva significations are the part of this basic. If you don't have the list of these karatattvas or the significations, it will be difficult for you to make predictions. Agreed, everybody? Yes. So, what is the easiest way? I can suggest you some books. You can read those books and you can make a list of those characters. Okay, obviously, I will also share you. Um, I have the list, some list. Okay, but before I share, I want you to do your uh, some work from your side also. No? So, this is the way how we learn. So, the first three books I already quoted, okay, but you will not find enough Karatatwas in this uh, Samhita Granth, okay. Brahja, Brahja Samhita, first Madhubhav Samhita, and this Narada or Vashishta. You can pick these four books, but you will not find enough significations. Then, what to do? There are some modern author books, okay. You can read those books, okay. You can buy it from Amazon or from any bookstores. Okay, you can collect significations from those books. But remember, uh, I will show you the one uh, format, okay, how you can prepare it. Okay, so you can prepare it accordingly. And one more thing, the availability of this mundane Jyotish books, you will find the maximum books from the foreigners, not from the Indian authors. Okay, this is a kind of a... Uh, a branch in which foreigners have done a lot of work. Okay, so you will find the maximum books, books from the foreigners only. But we are studying whole, whole, this uh, whole subject in the point of view of Vedic Jyotish, correct? 
so it's better to read modern authors book especially from the indian authors so you can correlate the many concepts hmm it's a very fast book uh, which i am also going to use uh, in my course also okay so the first book is i think time tested techniques time tested techniques in mundane astrology so this is the book time tested techniques in mundane astrology okay ms mehta guided and edited by shri kn ram okay this book is available in saptarishi's astrology also this is the first book and simple and good book okay and the second is mundane astrology a book for astrologer by kb gopal krishnan hmm, this is also a good book and there are two more books by shri jc luthra okay but this book is actually uh, you will find the many significations that is uh, taken from the western uh astrology hmm? but still it is fine because there are many character tattvas which you will not find in these books that is given in the jc lipura tattva that book is also available in sagar publication you will find in in our store on saptarishi publication so these are some books which uh, i can recommend you can there is another book by mn kedar the name of book is mundane astrology only yes that book also fine you can pick any one or two books okay so there you will share there you will see the uh, chapters which deals with the significations of planets and houses hmm you can make your own list so i will repeat the name time tested techniques of mundane astrology by ms mehta okay editor and guide by shri n rao uh, sorry k n rao okay from the vani publication this is the first book second book is mundane astrology a book for astrologer by k b gopal krishnan k b gopal krishnan okay third and fourth book is again on the mundane astrology both books are written by j c luthra I don't have that book right now. I just show you. You will find on the internet. So these are some modern authors' books. Hmm. You can find different examples and all these things, so it will give you more clarity. And the beauty of learning the subject is actually you can test it, okay, in day-to-day -day life. Agreed? Like nowadays we are. seeing lot of news for the adani ha huh? lot of things are happening okay so you can use this mundane jyotish and their principles to predict what is going to happen with the adani okay so maybe in next class we will do it okay we can take as examples so in in every class we will discuss some examples because without without examples you can't learn this technique technique is there is no any special techniques but we have lot of examples so obviously we can take it hmm? i think next year delhi election is going to happen so we can discuss that okay how to see the election result all these things we can discuss correct so these are the part of our course even stock market stock market is also a part of mundane okay so we are doing a separate course on this that course is already running okay but we will discuss some part of it here also okay so in nutshell what where where should you focus okay so i will tell you two three pointers So you need to keep these pointers in your mind when you study the mundane part. The first is you are hold on the karakatwas. Without this, no use. Okay, karakat significations of the houses and planet. This is the most important thing you need. 
second and the most important thing which many people uh, don't do that is the chart okay which kind of chart you need okay how to cast that chart okay so this the, the, this is what i am going to explain today okay like for example if you want to predict the outcomes of the election result huh? what will be the result then obviously what you need you you need some chart no the which chart you are going to prepare if you want to predict the outcome of any cricket match okay world cup result then how will you do it okay so till now you are doing predictions by using the birth chart okay you have data about place and time but how will you make predictions for the uh, sports match huh transit maybe world cup hmm maybe transit so, or something uh, like the current transit chart or maybe the transit player. chart it means you are you are you are talking about the prashna current there is a current transit obviously yes, we can i do also. i huh. do prashna for the match location and time like which time the match starts and where it happens right and i create a prashna for that place and for that time and then i try predicting the results technically as per the definition that is not the prashna prashna as per definition prashna is a prashna when you cast it from your location okay where astrologer is sitting okay so you are you are correct i am not saying you are right so this is the one of the method through which we can predict the outcome of uh, any sports or any cricket match like let's say if any match is happening in delhi ha uh, firoz shah kotla or i think something name i don't know they have changed the name i think let's say firoz shah kotla is a stadium in delhi ha uh, the match is happening there so at 6 pm match is starting So obviously, I can create a chart for the 6 p.m. for today's date, and the location is Delhi. Okay, this is a one way through which I can predict the outcome. Hmm. There are other ways also. Okay. Same thing apply to the outcome of the election result. You can create a prashna chart, or we have other mediums also. So the second most important thing is. the understanding okay which chart you need to cast hmm? there are seven to nine methods for it okay let's say if i want to know the uh, uh, predictions for our country okay for whole year what to do i have different methods okay the very popular method is i can cast the chart chart for the new year hmm? first of january 2025 starting okay 2025 so i can create a chart first of january 2025 okay 00 hours midnight uh, if i want to make predictions for the india i can put it place like new delhi hmm? if i want to make predictions for the america so i can uh keep the place for their capital okay like this i can create a chart and i can make prediction that will apply for the whole year applicable for the whole year am i correct this is the one method but there are other methods also now this is a very interesting thing to know that if you see the classical point of view or the point of view of our rishi hmm, or acharya okay they are not telling you to cast a chart for the 1st of january 2025 new year chart so okay, this is not the uh, method given by our acharya or rishi why there was during those time there is no uh, system of 365 or the new year concept na no? our new year start from the january So obviously, this this particular concept is not exist in our uh, very system. So it means if if you are following this method, you are not following the actual uh, the 
the concept given by our rishis. Agreed? I am not saying this technique is not working. This is still good. You can use it. You can create a chart for the new year. You can make predictions. Okay. But the purpose of creating the scores is to teach you the original and the authentic knowledge of our Vedic Jyotish given by our Rishi and Acharyas. Okay, so obviously I will cover this new year concept also, but other than this, I will also cover the other methods. Mm -hmm. What are other methods? Anybody know? Other than new year, how, how you can make predictions for whole year for the country? Um, like if you have the birth time for a country, right, like the establishment time and date, we can do Borsha fall for the country. Correct. Okay, so now I'll explain it one by one. The very first, uh, which we just heard, that foundation horoscope of the country. Huh? Foundation horoscope of the country. Like India, we have foundation horoscope. What is that? 15th of August, 1949, midnight. Clear? So like this, you need to identify the foundation dates and time Okay, for the different countries. Depending on it, you can cast a chart and you can make predictions not only for the years, for the upcoming years, for any uh, year. How? Simply you can use the Dasha system, which you are already using. No change in it. Clear? Or else, simply you can use the transit methods. By using the transit of Jupiter and Saturn, you can make yearly predictions. How to do that? That I will teach. Okay, this is the foundation horoscope. In foundation horoscope, we can use other methods also. Like, anybody feel like Bhrigu Chakra Paddhati is easy? Huh? So, I will also show you some demonstration or some horoscope in which we will use the Bhrigu Chakra Paddhati in foundation horoscope. It is comparatively more easy to do and you can make quick predictions. Hmm? Now, what is the Bhrigu Chakra Paddhati and all these things that I will cover? Clear? Yes. 